In his 1915 General Theory of Relativity, Albert Einstein defined gravity as the bending of space and time. This was the prevailing idea of gravity for the following century. But now, a new theory has been proposed that could change everything we know about gravity. The digital gravity theory proposes that gravity is not a force, but rather the product of the topology of space and time. If this new theory is correct, it could mean a complete overhaul of our understanding of physics. So far, it has been met with a lot of skepticism, but the scientists who proposed it are convinced that it is the right answer. Watch, like, and comment on new discovery that changed physics. Gravity is not a force. What do you think? Is this new theory correct, or is it just another crackpot idea? The Background History of Gravity Albert Einstein presented his theory of general relativity in 1915, which argued that gravitation was not a force, but rather the result of the curvature of space-time. Einstein's general theory of relativity is the gravity theory. It describes the gravitational force and its effects on things in space and time. The theory is based on the idea that the force of gravity is not a force at all. Instead, gravity is a consequence of the curvature of space-time. Einstein's theory of relativity has profoundly impacted our understanding of the universe. In particular, it has led to the discovery of black holes and the universe's expansion. General relativity is not a sole accepted theory of gravity. There are further hypotheses such as Newton's gravity theory. However, Einstein's theory of gravity is the most well-known and universally accepted. This was the revolutionary new discovery that changed the way we view physics. For centuries, scientists have been trying to figure out the nature of gravity, and Einstein's theory finally provided an answer. Since then, general relativity has been proven repeatedly through observations and experiments. It is now considered one of the most accurate physics theories. How we used to believe gravity worked we think of gravity as a force when most of us think of it. After all, that's the way it's been described in physics for centuries. Isaac Newton described gravity as a force between masses, taught that way in schools for generations. But what if gravity isn't a force at all? What if it's just an effect of the curvature of space-time? This is the theory that physicist Einstein put forth more than 100 years ago, and it's been gaining traction in the scientific community in recent years. So how did we get it so wrong for so long? Newton's law of gravity is quite accurate in a limited context. It works well for objects moving slowly or close to Earth, but it could hold up better when you're starting to look at things on a larger scale, like planets and galaxies. Why the new discovery of gravity changed physics when you think about gravity, it's the first force that comes to mind. After all, it's the one that makes things fall down. And what if I told you that gravity is not a force? Well, that's what physicist John Dalton uncovered when he made his relatively new discovery. For years, scientists had been operating under the false assumption that gravity was a force. But when Dalton looked at the evidence more closely, he realized it was actually an attraction between the masses. This new discovery changed how we looked at physics and helped pave the way for future discoveries. It was a pivotal moment in history of science, and it all started with one man asking the right questions. How Scientists Made This Discovery so how did scientists make this discovery? Well, it all started with a thought experiment. Albert Einstein came up with the idea of gravity as a curving of space-time, and that means that gravity results from how mass bends space-time instead of being a force. This might sound like a lot of complicated physics-y jargon, but bear with me, it'll all make sense in a minute. To understand how this works, imagine that space-time is a rubber sheet. Now. Put a bowling ball in the middle of that sheet. The bowling ball is going to cause the rubber to curve around it, and the bigger the ball, the more it curves the rubber. Now, if you were to roll a marble across that sheet of rubber, you would see that it would start to curve as it got closer to the bowling ball. And that's because the gravity of the bowling ball 
is causing the space-time around it to curve. Now, if you were to put a second bowling ball next to the first one, you would see that the space-time would curve even more. And that's because the gravity of both bowling balls is curving the space-time around them. So to sum up, gravity is not a force. It's a result of the way mass bends space-time. And the more mass there is, the more space-time will bend. Einstein realized that things fall not because of a force pulling them down, but because they are following the natural curvature of space-time. And the more mass there is, the more space-time bends. This may not seem like a big deal, but it's a huge shift in how we think about gravity. And it's led to some pretty big discoveries, like the fact that black holes exist. What does this mean for theoretical physics? In the past, gravity has been seen as a force out there in the universe, pulling things together. But if gravity isn't a force, what is it? Some scientists believe that gravity results from the curvature of space-time. Instead than being drawn towards anything, we are following the universe's inherent curve. This theory is called general relativity, and it was first proposed by Albert Einstein in 1915. And while it's been widely accepted by the scientific community, there's still a lot we don't know about it. If gravity isn't a force, that means there's something else out there that we don't know about yet. And that's exciting for physicists, because it means there's still so much to discover about our universe. Implications for our everyday lives so what does this all mean for us in our everyday lives? Well, for starters, it means that the way we've been taught to think about gravity is wrong. It's not a force pulling us down. It's a curvature of space-time caused by massive objects. And what does that mean for how we live our lives? It means we don't have to worry about things falling on us. Things fall because of the curvature of space-time, not because gravity is pulling them down. It also means that we can think about gravity in a new way. Instead of thinking of it as a force, we can think of it as a curving of space-time. That could open up all sorts of new possibilities for how we understand the universe. Does gravity exist at all? This is where things get really interesting and controversial. Some physicists believe that gravity doesn't exist at all. How can that be? They say that the force of gravity is an illusion. What we experience as gravity is the result of other forces at work. What we experience as the force of gravity results from the curvature of space-time. The famous physicist Albert Einstein was the first to propose this idea with his theory of general relativity. Einstein demonstrated in his theory that gravity is not a force at all. Instead, it is caused by the distortion of space and time by mass and energy. General relativity by Einstein is our most successful gravity theory. It has passed every test we have administered. Therefore, according to Einstein, gravity is not a force. It is a result of the universe's structure. However, this concept remains disputed. Numerous physicists feel Einstein was incorrect and that gravitation is a force. The debate continues today, and we may have yet to have a definitive answer for many years. So what are these other forces? One of them is the curvature of space-time. And while that might sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, it's actually real. It's a theory that Albert Einstein first proposed in his general relativity theory. Why does gravity pull in opposite directions on Earth's surface? Suppose you are standing on the Earth's surface. You are being pulled towards the center of the Earth by gravity. However, another force known as centrifugal force is also pulling you outward. Why then do we feel gravity dragging us downward? It relates to something known as inertial frames of reference. Unless acted upon by an unbalanced force, in an inertial frame of reference, objects at rest remain at rest, while objects in motion continue to travel with constant velocity. In other words, when standing on the Earth's surface, your frame of reference is the surface itself. And because the Earth is continuously spinning, there is an outward centrifugal force. This force, however, is nullified by the force of gravity, which is drawing you inwards. Even though both gravity and centrifugal force are forces that operate on things, they cancel each other out at the Earth's surface. But what if you are not standing on the Earth's surface? What if you're in the cosmos? In this case, your frame of reference would be the entire universe. And since the universe is expanding, there's a force called dark energy pushing outwards. However, this force is canceled out by the force of gravity, which is pulling everything inwards. As a result, 
We only experience the force of gravity when we're standing on the surface of the Earth. But in reality, gravity is a force always acting on us, regardless of where we are. Force of Earth-Sun gravitational bond pulls objects toward the ground rather than away from it. Upon consideration, it makes logical. The gravitational attraction between the Earth and the Sun draws things toward the Sun rather than away from it. Therefore, if you are standing on the Earth, the Earth-Sun gravitational attraction is tugging you toward the Sun. However, the Earth is also rotating, so you are standing on a platform that is spinning. The result of the platform moving away from the Sun is that you are drawn toward the Sun. But why does the Earth-Sun gravitational attraction drive things toward the Sun and not away? The solution relates to the characteristics of gravity. Gravity is a space-time curvature, not a force. And the space-time curvature is created by mass and energy. The more objects mass and energy, the more it warps space-time. So the Earth-Sun gravitational bond pulls objects toward the Sun because the Sun has more mass than the Earth. The Sun bends space-time more than the Earth, so the space-time around the Sun is more curved than the space-time around the Earth. And that means that objects are pulled toward the Sun more than they are pulled toward the Earth. The answer has to do with the way gravity works. Gravity is not a force. It's a curvature of space. The closer you are to a massive object, the more space is curved. So when you're standing on the Earth, the space around you is curved by the Earth's gravity. And the space around the Sun is even more curved. So objects are pulled toward the Sun more than they are pulled toward the Earth. This is why the gravity of the Earth-Sun bond pulls objects toward the Sun and not away from it. There's another reason why the gravity of the Earth-Sun bond pulls objects toward the Sun, and that's because the Sun is moving. The Sun is orbiting the Milky Way galaxy, constantly moving, and as it moves, it drags the space around it. So the closer you are to the Sun, the more you're pulled along with it. This is why the gravity of the Earth-Sun bond pulls objects toward the Sun and not away from it. The Sun has more mass than the Earth, so it bends space-time more. And the Sun is always moving, so it drags the space around along with it. Because the Earth is so large, the space surrounding it is very curved. As the Sun's mass increases, the space surrounding it becomes increasingly more curved. Therefore, when standing on the Earth, the surrounding space is bent by the Earth's gravity. But the gravity of the Sun is far stronger. Therefore, space-time around the Sun is more curved than space-time around the Earth, since the Sun wraps space-time more than the Earth. Consequently, things are drawn toward the Sun more strongly than they are toward the Earth. When you're close to a massive object, the space around it curves more, and that curvature pulls you toward it. And that's why the gravity of the Earth-Sun bond pulls objects towards the Sun. We experience gravity as a force pulling us toward the ground because the Earth is much bigger than us. And as anyone who has taken a physics class knows, gravity is proportional to mass. So when you jump up in the air, you're not actually fighting gravity. You're just not experiencing its full effect because you're not massive enough. But what if you were as big as the Earth? Then you would experience the full force of gravity, and you would be pulled towards the Sun like the Earth. Overall, gravity is not a force but the result of the Earth's mass interacting with the Sun's gravity, and we experience it as a force pulling us toward the ground because the Earth is much bigger than we are. It's like riding in a car and taking your foot off the gas pedal. The car doesn't suddenly start going backward. It just slows down because nothing is pushing it forwards anymore. In conclusion, the new physics changes how we view the world and ourselves. It is a more accurate depiction of reality and is more in line with the latest findings of quantum mechanics. It's a fascinating area of study and one that is constantly evolving. Goodbye for now and thank you for reading our article. Please subscribe and comment on our YouTube channel about new discovery that changed physics. Gravity is not a force.